Um, since we uh, since we have all the speakers except for uh, Ms. Dan earlier, we now go to the q and I think there are a couple of uh, uh, residual questions uh, that were posted earlier. If I may go back to Sir Edgar, if you're still there, I think you had a question earlier in terms of the, the BMAC tricycle. Since we, we promised to ask this directly to Doc Manny, uh, if you can uh, turn on your mic or are you still there? Uh, yes, yes. Ayan. Si Sir Edgar, kasi Sir, may tanong kanina regarding the BMAC tricycles. Mm. Yeah, I think he's uh, coming online. I think. Hello? Yeah, I'm still here. Yeah. Sir, yung tanong natin <laughs> kanina, nandiyan na si Doc Manny. Yep. Uh, uh, sir, uh, yung sa, sa BMAC ba, uh, how do you, ano, yung, yung charging, yung mga charging stations, are they are they uh, ano uh, capable or uh, yeah are they applicable to those BMAC BMAC 64B ba yun na uh, ano yeah actually in, in the case in the case of BMAC okay, uh, designed the electronics niya to charge uh, to do slow charging so basically ano lang siya yung plug lang sa sa bahay uh, sayang kasi yung battery niya is magandang klase ng battery siya actually if you if you oh uh, my <laughs> is that presentation is LTO. So you cannot maximize it. But unfortunately, pagka sinaksak mo yun sa mas higher na charging system. In fast charger. It's, it's yeah. fast charger. Baka shut down lang din ng, ng electronics niya kasi parang uh, may electronic protection siya or baka umihit siya. So, uh, sorry, sorry. Yeah, so ang suggestion ko doon is uh, talk to BMAC. Baka meron silang version na uh, um, Pwede na nakapitan ng, ng BMS or charge controllers that allows the batteries to charge faster. I know, sir, na ano, Dr. Dr. Jose, the uh, UP has uh, yes. uh, <laughs> invented so, one like a fast charger uh, for yeah, that. Yes, pero um, the, the, yeah, the charger is different from the BMS and the charge controller kasi nung, oh, yeah, yeah. nung sasakyan. So yung bottleneck mm. is nandun sa ano, nandun sa sa BMS and sa control system ng ng battery. So yun ang ah, kailangan okay. na palitan. Now, I think right now uh nabo-void yung warranty pag charge siya sa higher rate than what is recommended. Ako I suggest to just wait for the warranty to ano, to end. And then <laughs> uh okay, have have the ba- have the battery pack retrofitted. Then you can now charge faster. Okay. Thanks for the answer, sir. Two years yata yung ano lang, two years. Ilang years pa yung warranty niya? Alam ko, five years yata yun eh. Five, five years. years. Then you have to, I, I think, uh, <laughs> okay, that, that, that battery could last a lifetime kasi magandang klase yung battery yan eh. So, oh, nga, eh. I think pag, pag ito ng five years, i, i, buhay pa rin naman yan. Theoretically, yeah. buhay pa yung battery na yan. So, you can you can replace that. So, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Electronics. Thank you, Sir Edgar, for the question. Doc Manny, for the answer. Salamat. Um, siguro, if I, um, if you do have the, so the participants from uh, PASIG, uh, from uh, CTDMO Engineering, kung meron po kayong uh, specific questions, uh, I'd like to invite you also to, to post them or directly speak. Siguro ko nandiyan sila, Sara. Um, yeah. Before I go through some of the other um, questions that were chatted in the the chat box. Okay, while we wait, Siguro, I, I had, do have a couple of questions here. The first one, um, maybe for uh, Chure or Nuong, or maybe even the Vittorio, there was a question in terms of international experiences. Um, what can you recommend? From the perspective of a city, what are the kinds of support that local governments can immediately provide? for the success of uh, the deployment of EVs and uh, the charging infrastructure. I think uh, there were a couple that were mentioned earlier. Um, maybe uh, from anyone from our international uh, resource persons can, can take that one. I, I think you can share with the uh, of Thailand. I think, uh, mm-hmm. I think for Thailand, I think the role of I think local government is uh, <clears throat> maybe different from other country. I think our uh, local government uh, are actually not as I think 
big and powerful. You know, like of course, if you look at US, look at many other country that you know a local government has certain authority that can be done, yeah, decision making. But I think for Thailand, local government uh, in general are not that uh, critical, except the fact that like Bangkok, you know, or Chiang Mai, the mm-hmm. uh, Pattaya, which is big city, then they have uh, some sort of the internal web, uh, what we call the internal municipal tax, yeah. right? Yeah. And they can use those tax, you know, for the benefit of the inhabitant or people who live in the in, in those particular area. One of the things that I think <clears throat> in response to the, the question that I've been posed earlier that uh, I can share that in Bangkok also, we have this uh, BTS, which is like a, a electric train that uh, connecting I think, mm-hmm. part of the, the major part of Bangkok. And uh, they also coming, I think uh, just uh, this year with uh, electric bus feeder. So those kind of thing is actually, uh, uh, actually uh, additional service that provided by the local government, you know, who actually taking care of this uh, 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 electric train, uh, or some of the thing is that mm-hmm. in Konkan they are talking about to have this uh, tower cooperation that could have the tram that leading between the major city and university you know, and the airport. Those kind of thing, I think that's mm-hmm. uh, something that the local community in Thailand can do. Yeah. And but uh, besides that, I think in terms of regulation. A big project if you have to rely on the federal or the yeah. federal mm-hmm. government. Thank you, thank you, Nguong. You very important uh, points there in terms of integrating into the budget planning as well as in, in the wider plans. No, yeah, thank you, uh, Churi. Would you like to uh, add to that? Um, yes, I think um, many of the important policies are in the hand of national governments. Well, because of the structure of Taiwan's uh, governance, we only mostly have just local governments and national governments. So the major infrastructure plans and bills uh, have to be passed or supported by the national government. But I think in a way for local governments, what they uh, can do, I think, is actually, I think it's on the, sometimes on the side of enforcement. So using the emission regulation is a good tool, but then it's up to the local governments to see where they really crack down uh, those old in internal combustion engine, either vehicles or uh, cars or scooters, so that in these transport policies in terms of the, the carrot and stick, at least the stick side will work in a way. Mm. And possibly also working with uh, the sort of the suppliers and manufacturers, uh, such as GoGo in this case, to find out uh, where the, the market is, what would be the big win? I think very early on, I think together with uh, the pu- public and private collaboration through that mechanism, they realized that it would be easier and beneficial for everyone to have battery swapping stations mm. right in front of uh, sort of the urban supermarkets or even gas stations or right. just places people definitely would go and park their scooters so that mm. they would have an understanding of the convenience of these scooters. And I think but it's, it's now has come to a point that um, at the end of the day, EV is all about energy management, right? So it's, it has come to the point how the best to manage the energy use more efficiently. And what about, I think it also about uh, the deployment of charging facilities in rural areas, who's gonna pay for that? And because it's not a business model for Google, for example, to install a charging station in the middle of nowhere where this population is 100, mm. but they want to use electric scooters. So who's going to pay for that? We don't want to fall into that trap of, oh, mm. government has to come and subsidize these. And then that would just be a black hole of subsidizing, say, public transport and all that. But I think there is no answer for that. But uh, I would mm. like to hear yeah, everyone's opinions and thoughts. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sure. Um, again, just to uh, review your key points. The first one is on enforcement. Uh, the second one is working with the suppliers and looking into local processes that would facilitate the engagement. Uh, for example, it was also discussed during the first presentation in terms of permitting processes, uh, things like this. And uh, the third one is on the planning. And you had a question maybe um, on who would account for the rural uh, electrification, essentially. So thank you very much for that. Um, I think we have a question earlier. Vittorio, if you're still around. Um, uh, still around. <laughs> Hi, Victoria. Yeah, uh, thanks for staying with us. 
<laughs> yeah, no, no worries. There was a question with regards to your uh, presentation earlier in terms of the uh, um, if you have recommendations, quick recommendations um, in terms of the distance um, in respect to other buildings. Is there like a minimum uh, distance uh, that would be considered uh, for such charging stations, or is this uh, something to be considered actually, or um, in, in terms of integrating it in the urban space? Uh, yeah, thank you. Uh, you mean the one between the building, not the one between station and station, correct? I think so. Um, would you like to elaborate on your question that uh, you posted? Because if it is station to station, the typical uh, right. trends yeah. in Europe now is around, uh, for the DC fast, uh, 50 kilometers. 50, okay. But let me say, obviously, car maker would like one each meter uh, who has to pay the infrastructure, say maybe not. So yeah, is a, a discussion in which we have to find the balance. Why, if it is in the, um, respect of the building, that's depend on local regulation coming from fiber gates, for instance, in internet and so on. That's uh, uh, going down to the local rules uh, to be to be considered and applied. Mm. All right, thank you. Thank you, uh, Vittorio, for that. Uh, if there are no other points, sorry, but I have to leave. Indeed, thank you very much, uh, Vittorio. Thank you to you for the very fruitful experience yeah. uh, and sharing and uh, stay in touch. Bye-bye. Thank you, thank you. Um, for everyone else, apologies for running a bit late, but yeah, we do have some questions if uh, everyone, or, or those of you can stay still. We do have a couple of questions. Maybe I would invite, I, I got a question from Sarah. Would you like to uh, verbally ask the question or uh, if you can do so? No? Um... Hi. Okay, hi. Hi, Sarah. Go ahead. <clears throat> okay, so this is for Dr. Tujuli Cheng. So can you expound more on the subsidy programs you have for the charging station installation for the private sector? And does Taiwan have other incentives to garner more support from the private sector and e vehicles? Yeah, thank you. Uh, so for the charging facilities, if I remember correctly, the uh, um, it's a little bit confusing. That's why uh, I brought the, the issues about horizontal integration because uh, there are two ministries, the Environmental Protection Agency and the Ministry of Economic Affairs, uh, both subsidizing the installation of charging poles. I think the amount is roughly about the same. So as a private operator, I could go applying for subsidies from these two ministries. Um, I think it's, if you install a charging pool for, um, if you are self built stations instead of, uh, so there are two, I think two tracks. One is if you are building uh, charging stations uh, for, as a private operator, and then your subsidies will be lower than if you're building these for the, and, but also opening up to the, the private users and you get, uh, opening opening up for the public users so that you will uh, receive more funding, more subsidies from the national government as an incentive so that they want you to receive money, but also for more people to use your charging points and charging stations. So there are two, uh, actually one subsidy style, but then two tracks to apply for uh, the funding, the subsidies. And for EV, um, electric scooters, for electric scooters, it was quite confusing previously because uh, as a scooter user, say myself, you found to face out my old combustion engine scooters to get an, an, a new electric scooter, I could apply for two types of uh, subsidies. One is just uh, for the kind of direct face out of the internal combustion engine scooter, there's a subsidy Say so if you give up your internal conventional scooter to get a new scooter and then you get this funding. And there is also just a pure funding of getting rid of your old scooter, regardless of mm. whether it's electric or gasoline power. So that's the subsidy actually caused the backfire, but somehow it's open to everyone. So there are actually two tracks of subsidies and the subsidy program, again, varies between cities. Like some cities provide more funding. So that creates a lot of confusion that if say, uh, say if Alvin and I both live in Taiwan and 
where Alvin lives has a higher subsidy benefits and I will ask Alvin to, to buy a scooter for me and then mm -hmm. so I will get a more deduction so it's really confusing yeah. people try to get a loophole and the government try to like get people accountable but somehow I think from some sort of good intention they provide dual track programs for just facing our old scooters you get two sets of, uh, subsidies and for charging spouse you get two sets of subsidies and um, yeah, so one from, I should, I think, national government for the charging spots and poles and scooters mostly from uh, the local governments. And some are actually channeled from the National Envir uh, the Environmental Protection Administration. Um, if it's about emission reduction, if facing on your old scooter has contribution to emission reduction and the money comes from Environmental Protection Bureau. And then if the facing our scooter has provides benefit to the development of the e-scooter industry and you get the funding from the Ministry of the Economic Affairs. So just a confusing yet, uh, I hope that works and helps. Thank you, thank you very much, uh, Ture. Uh, I think Sarah, yeah, that, yeah, I think these kinds of insights are very valuable, like um, insights coming from on the ground experience in all these uh, different in intricacies. No, uh, and this would be useful in terms of uh, also for for in, in the case of the Philippines and moving forward with the with the policies as well, and um, in relation hopefully in, in in relation to the subsidies as well in the future. Um, maybe if I can uh, again like invite everyone uh, from the other LGUs if you have specific questions. Uh, maybe this is the last call. Um, um, bef uh, before we move to the announcements, but there was one specific uh, uh, insight that, that um, we wanted to get Doc Manny's, uh, um, uh, sorry, one question. Doc Manny, are you still there? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yung question with regards to, I know, may question dito regards to how come hindi na issue yung cost ng swapping sa motorcycles while sa e-trike mas mahal siya? Yeah. Sorry uh, for yeah. the international. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, so, so for 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 motorcycles, normally normally the batteries are very light, so it could be easily moved by the driver himself, and then just plug into the to the, to the charging cabinet, and then you get a new one, and then plug into the peak to the to the motorcycle. But for for electric bicycles, you're talking about thirty to forty kilos of battery mm. battery pack, so. That needs like one to two persons, uh, two two persons to to bring it out, put it in the cart. So, so you you have you have human resource there, and that increases actually the cost. Mm. Okay, thank you, thank you, Doc Manny. Is there anyone else who would want to pose a question before we move to the closing and the announcements? Uh, going once, going twice. Okay, so if none, um, I would like to thank all the speakers. Um, Doc Mani, uh, Dr. Chure, Dr. Nuwong, uh, Vittorio, and Ms. Tang for the wonderful contributions uh, um, 